Welcome to Never Rewrite. I'm Isaac Askew. And I'm Jeffrey Sherman. And today, we're going to discuss how rewrites push project risks to the end and how that impacts your delivery. So risk is a recurring theme uh, on the show because we, you know, our, one of our thesis is that you shouldn't do rewrite software because it's risky. Right. And we've covered that from a number of topics. And one of the early episodes, we'll have to look it up in the backlog, is that rewrites push risk to the end of the project because that's when it actually gets in the hands of the customers. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, an example that I wanted to work through today where I'm involved with something that turned out to be a rewrite. And because it's a rewrite, the customers didn't get it involved, didn't see the product until it was like 90, 95% complete. And mm -hmm. now the customers have feedback and the feedback is at risk of de derailing the entire project. So I want to pause there for a second. Yeah. And if it's a rewrite and they were just, uh, presumably we were rewriting something to keep parity with the old system. Why did it, we want feedback? It was not to keep parity. Oh, okay. This was two related things where one it so it's a report so one mm -hmm. the report hadn't been updated in many years and it was out of date you know, just it was ugly and oh. it needed diff to show different data like it was visually ugly and it didn't show the data that they really wanted it to and so it needed to be replaced updated and then additionally the back end service was the technology wasn't able to keep up and make the reports display the data quick enough. Mm, okay. Which are two unrelated problems that got pushed together in, to justify a full rewrite. And so because Why didn't of you that, just fix it in the old system. Well, so that right. <laughs> so ahead. the the report could have been refreshed with the old system it still would have been extremely slow. It would have been unacceptably slow. And so, you know, musketeering at its best, mm -hmm. the, the argument was made of, oh, well, if we have to replace the whole front end because, you know, it needs to be updated and we don't, you know, it, it just needs a full refresh. It needs to show different data. We need to do that. And for technology reasons, we need to replace the back end because it's not the technology we have isn't fast enough. Instead of doing those two things iteratively and independent of each other, let's mm -hmm. you know save time. The the siren song of saving time and being faster and better. We'll do it all in one giant rewrite, and it'll be faster. And this show is all about well, it's not going to be faster. Like it's never going to be faster. There must just be some sense of drama of like, oh, we have this whole thing and we're just going to deliver it all together and it's going to be amazing and blow your mind. Yes. And that's just not a good way to, <laughs> to write code. Well, one thing I, I keep, I've been hammering on in my blog is if you're running a SaaS, the idea of a grand reveal, we're going to do this giant release and it's going to blow your mind. Mm -hmm. It's in violation of the entire principle and the idea behind SaaS which is that you always have the latest software and that you're going to get continually get upgrades and updates. Mm -hmm, right. Right. When you have software that gets released or, you know, in way back when they would ship it on a floppy disk or a CD, or even on, when you had to install it on prem, you do it like quarterly. It's like, Oh yeah, you have to do, have this big release. It's got to have all these shiny new features in SAS having, you know, storing up, all these features to have a giant shiny release, it violates the very principle of a SAS. Right. I want to get back to the concept again, though, of uh, the feedback from the customer real quick, because you're basically saying that um, that derailed the project, mm -hmm. but even still, like why was there feedback from the customer, even on um, what's going to change? Why did that come so late? Why didn't, what was there not like a demo of what the changes were going to be that was already run by the customer beforehand? There was not. Okay. So because they were not iterating and replacing the existing report, the customer saw the old report one day, and then the next day they saw the new report and it had 
been sprung upon them full and complete in its speedy and it has showing different data. Got it. And when the customer saw the new report, they said, wow, it's really speedy and it looks very pretty. <laughs> but some of the data that you're showing me on this page isn't the data that I want you to show on this page. Some of the way you're calculating time and what mm -hmm. comes in and stays out or what counts isn't the way that other people do it. It's not the standard way or it's not the way I want it. And it's not right. that the, right, this isn't, this isn't a case of bugs. There was a spec, the developer wrote the, the spec and the, the numbers are correct. It's just the numbers are not what the customer wants. Those aren't the numbers. Those aren't the droids you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Those aren't it's the numbers. It's a business bug. Yeah, it's a business bug. <laughs> right. That's a fun one. I haven't thought of that before. <laughs> a product bug. Well, it's not even a bug. Yeah. And this is a standard thing. Is you The first time you show customers anything new, they're going to have mm -hmm. feedback. Right. Which is why you want to show it to them as early in the process as possible when it's cheaper and easier to change it because you've got less of it complete. That is kind of like what Slack does when they have like this kind of slow releases of new designs and everyone complains about them always because no one mm -hmm. likes change. But you yes. get feedback kind of early before they kick it in for everybody, you know? Exactly. But because so, it was a rewrite, you couldn't show the new report until you had mm -hmm. the new backend. And so, so you had a big they, bang they slipped order. together. Yeah. Yep. But the, the two of them individually were big projects and individually they could have been iteratively developed, but because they were together, they had to be released together. And so they, the release came very late. Yeah. And we can even see now, I guess, talking about it, because you were saying those two were tied together, like the refresh of the ugliness of the reports mm -hmm. and the speed of the back end. If you did do just a refresh of the ugliness of the report first then you mm -hmm. could get that feedback. You can get that done first. The backend mm -hmm. still being slow. That's fine. We'll solve that later. Get the feedback from the customer and then use that before. And you're breaking down those like in between different weeks as you get the feedback instead of at the end. Right. A more iterative approach would have been change the report, get the feedback about what is or isn't good about the report, and then make the report fast. Right. Make it work, make it right, make it fast. That basically that, that is <laughs> that is a standard thing yeah make it make it work make it right make it fast and but they they lost out on that opportunity because they tried to make it right and fast at the same time yep or alternatively they could have made the existing report fast and then iterated to make it better right so how did this derail the project at the end? Like the, the feedback, did they just take it and go, oh, we can't release or what's going on there? Well, there's a timely, so there's a deadline for the project. Like it has to be done by a certain point because there's a code freeze coming up. It's the getting to the end of the year and it oh. needs to be done. Right. And so the, and a certain percentage of the customers have already had it rolled out. Oh, I, I left out a giant detail. So in this hmm. example of, that I'm dealing with, there's a, also a problem with the back end. The back end is 30 times more expensive than estimated. And so we cannot Whoa. release it in generally. So ah, this reminds me of that resource engineering conversation from a couple mm -hmm. of episodes ago about understanding if the solution that you have is financially feasible. How much does it cost to deliver that? Because a lot of engineers aren't thinking that. They think, I can make that work. I have the mm -hmm. tools to make that work, but they're not the ones with the wallet. Right. In this case, the the existing, the original solution was MySQL, and MySQL was not designed and powerful enough to do the data computations needed. So a new database was selected, and then it turned out that it also was not the correct solution. Hmm. But instead of kind of acknowledging and like, oh, well, we should go back to the drawing board on it. They kind of, the developers pushed forward anyway. And they came up with a solution that made it work. But because of all the externalities of do, of making it work, the cost of running that solution blew, ballooned. And so, mm. you know, hammering the 
I'll call it the square peg of this database into the round hole of the requirements, <laughs> caused it to become unfeasibly, untenably expensive. So it sounds like it's not going in for the last quarter of release before code freeze. Well, maybe. Mm. So here we have the two pieces of the rewrite where the physical, the view of the report is done, but now customers have feedback on it. And the back end, which is tightly coupled to it, has a problem in that way it's too expensive to release. So they've got like the beta group and they've got it and they're happy, but we can't release it further because it's too expensive. And so the solution, so now I'm involved in the solution I, I pushed is, Hey, there was no reason to make the front end work. Like there was no requirement that the front end needed the new back end. We could separate those two and make the front end work against the old back end. It, you know, as we said before, it will be unacceptably slow, but that's unacceptably slow. Just like the current version is, but it solved right. one problem yeah. at a time. That makes sense uh, to me. And then this is where we now have the two system problem and <laughs> changes yeah. become extremely expensive because you have to you change it in the old places. In the new. Yeah. Yeah. And or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it always comes back to these same problems every time. <laughs> it, it comes back. You, you combine multiple problems and then you have problems that are combined and they become more, you know, they, they musketeer. It's all for one and one for all. And you either mm -hmm. get all or you get none. And they be, you know, it becomes intractable because you put it together. Right. I think if I was presented these options, like, oh, here's what we did and here's what we can do. We can roll back. We can change this. We can push forward. I think I would I kind of acknowledge, oh, man, how do we get feedback this late? How do we end up uh, with a solution that got so expensive that we didn't plan on that? And use it kind of as like almost a post-mortem kind of thing. But in the end, it feels like the safe thing to do is what kind of what you're describing. First of all, just go back to the old system because people were using it and they were fine with it probably for many years, even though it was mm -hmm. like, now it's not frustratingly different and expensive. And then as you're suggesting, just work on delivering that front end piece. Um, and then even while you're delivering the front end piece too, you can have the back end engineers discussing a solution that might be more financially tenable and now that they have some bolt time because of the failure of not releasing the full thing. That seems reasonable to me, unless somebody's just really gunning to get this thing out for arbitrary reasons. No, that is, you've exactly described the plan, the solution. It's more of a plan. It's not, a, like, that's the iterative approach that I've been pushing. I'm like, look, we're going to iterate. We're going to do this thing. And we're not even going to release the whole front end to the customer all at once. We're going to release it one page mm -hmm. at a time. Is this something that you recommended months before and we just you end up kind of just like they, they delivered it coupled anyway or like how, what was yes, your advice in this, on this case to with? Okay. It, it was it was when i first saw the proposal i said these two things don't need to be coupled you could deliver them independently and the pushback i got was hey if we deliver them independently the new report will look nice but it'll be very slow which is true and it'll be faster the the project will be faster if we and better if we do it together. Well, I feel like, so, I mean, is this the same thing as saying the new report would look nice, but it would be just as slow as before? Yes. Okay, so you've improved one piece. Like, I don't get the pushback. <laughs> I don't know. Sure, sure. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've got a blog post from on, my, on Sherman on Software where I talked about this, the the phrase that was used was turd frosting. We would be frosting a turd <laughs> and then iterating to a cupcake. And I was right. like, yes, exactly. You understand exactly what I'm talking about. That is exactly what we're going to do. But see, like the, the, the insanity of that to me, excuse the word, I guess, yeah. is like you're, su you're suggesting let's improve one piece. And then someone's pushing back and saying, but that means we can't improve two pieces at the same time. And you're like, exactly. <laughs> Why? Yes. 
I, I mean, again, it seems like to be just for the sake, I mean, like maybe playing devil's advocate. If they can deliver both at the same time in the same time frame, then they could squeeze that in there at the timeline. But then that hits the risk part. This, this was the risk piece where they've gambled. Right. A couple of them were gambling that we're going to get this thing done in time. And the gamble failed. It Correct. was a good attempt, but the gamble failed. <laughs> and it's safe well, I don't know if I would, you I would say it. that it's a good attempt because... With rewrites, I'm being, I'm being nice. I'm being nice. Well, with rewrites, it, this is the the problem is yeah. they they become very brittle. It either all works or it all doesn't. Yeah. And you're gambling, and it's a right. gamble where the risk is at the end. Yep. So break it into pieces. I mean, that just it just makes it's not as dramatic. I'll give them that. It's not as dramatic if you just release release some pieces, but it's just so much safer. And right. I feel like we've had many stories on this podcast now that kind of. Really hammer down that point. <laughs> and to go one further, if you're working in SaaS, which I believe many of our listeners are, most, it's holding off, holding, you know, design, saying, I'm going to have, I'm going to give the customer no new features so that I can give them giant new features later. It's a violation mm -hmm. of the very fundamental principles that underline like SaaS and the subscription model, which is continuous upgrades and improvements. Holding right. back for dram for dramatic flair is harmful to your customers, and you shouldn't do it. I like that. That's a good quote. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Should we leave it there? I think so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you all for listening. I'm Jeffrey Sherman. And I'm Isaac Askew, and this is Never Rewrite. <laughs>